So now I'd like to turn to uh, uh, Chris Blackmar uh, for his discussion of his sandbox model. So Chris, welcome. I uh, wanted to welcome everybody to tonight's uh, sandbox series. Tonight, we're gonna look at uh, the uh, build of Luca's cabin. Uh, this one features uh, clapboard sliding, uh, how to on doing uh, clapboard, a quick and effective uh, coloring of the clapboard using some uh, marking pens people don't normally use. And uh, we're gonna put a gray blue haze on uh, some corrugated roofing. And then also a little bit of uh, definition work that I uh, normally uh, am going to start incorporating in my documentation. Again, the uh, Sandbox series is a uh, short tutorial modeling course that I'm kind of creating where you actually go through and build the models. Um, I'm presenting or trying to present in the Sandbox series a broad set of modeling skills, which modelers don't typically use. Um, the idea here is for you to get outside of the model um, from your normal, you know, box art. Uh, obtain uh, confidence over making fear uh, of mistakes while you're modeling. Thus the reason for getting hands wet and doing some small modeling uh, to view and translate the real world into the miniature world uh, using fine artist skills and to provide multiple approaches to the various tasks using different mediums if possible. Uh, finally, all of the models are uh, going to be just real simple and in, uh, inexpensive projects to build. And the idea here is to encourage modelers to explore new skills and to produce other colors and textures than they normally would, thereby improving your hobby enjoyment. That's the bottom line goal. The plans for this again come from the uh, Harriman's book, Pat Harriman's book on uh, early wood frame and stone structures. This is the third uh, one in the book. This uh, build goals include, as I stated earlier, the clapboard, uh, citing how to uh, a quick and effective uh, coloring technique and getting that blue glaze, uh, blue haze down on uh, metal roofing. Again, it is uh, HO scale board by board over a mat board template and um, we'll be using a metal foil. The doors and windows will both be scratch built. Uh, after kind of getting into some of the materials and things, I will then go into a discussion of uh, what I call defines. In the past, I have repeatedly used the same language you know, for the same type of thing repeatedly in the directions. So here, what I'm going to do is just come up with a name for that series of directions. As an example, I'll call it lid stain. That's where you have uh, cut ends on your wood and you go through wire brush both sides of the surfaces. You then stain the end woods by only using a very minute amount of stain solution to control that amount of stain. You just use the uh, lid that you used off the top of the bottle that you may have shaken there and then just tap those wood sticks in the end, pull them between your finger and thumb. That pulls down some of the wicking that occurred, keeps it down to the ends of the wood and provide you with a nice staining technique uh, for that piece of wood. Um, here you can see <clears throat> the uh, side walls and in walls constructed. Um, in the instructions, I'll go through and go walk you through doing clapboard, board by board, but you can see uh, on the outside, the two in walls that have been uh, created using the stained, the base stained strip wood. And then in the middle, we've got the second layer of staining going on the side walls and the uh, window. 
Uh, here I'm showing you an example of the type of documentation that you will see inside the uh, series as you read through it. Here you can see as I am tried to express earlier, we're going to be using different types of tools. So you're going to be using a fan brush and some diluted uh, yellow wood stain using a semi-dry brush. Um, I am also going to walk you through right down to brush sizes and types of brushes uh, and what kind of strokes to be using. Here you're using your strokes uh, going across the horizontally across the wood. Here you're going to see it's a vertical bottom to top of the wall. Down here, we're going to use some fine powdered dirt. I, this is actually dirt that we put through two layers of pantyhose. Um, so if you're single, and, and go ask your fellow nurses for their pantyhose. Um, you get real weird looks. I know for that from experience. Uh, we're then going to flood the walls with some clear ETOH, which is alcohol, all of the things like alcohol and stuff is defined earlier. My point of this whole slide is that this gives you a sample of the documentation that will be contained in the uh, instructions that go along to the sand build or sandbox builds. Here you can see the clapboards after they have been weathered and applied in place. This kind of gives you a clue on what we're going for in this middle section here, you can kind of see the end result of some of that uh, lid staining that I expressed earlier and how that turns out. The other nice thing about this is you can get a feel for how the expression of coloring comes through on the wood and the individual clapboards using the technique that I've uh, briefly kind of showing you here, as well as doing the board by board sectioning, you can get the oddball size boards like this here. Um, so this gives you a another clue on the siding. This picture is actually to show the uh, edging, board edges, the corner edges being applied. Uh, you can also see in this picture a different aspect of how the staining took to the clapboards. And you can also see here uh, a mistake that I actually made in trying out using the marking pins. I've got two streaks of red here where I used too much weight uh, or too much downward pressure when applying the staining. And this is one reason you want to make some small practice models, but doing it on a practice model and things, it makes it a little bit easier to actually run into some mistakes that you may uh, create for yourself later on because you're using the techniques that you'll actually be able to uh, utilize in other models. Again, here you can see some of the nice things that board by board also produces for you, like in this clapboards right here. And you can see some of the edge boards uh, in the uh, uh, different size boards going across the wall. We then will go through building doors. Uh, if you've been looking at the other couple of cabins, you'll notice that the doors and those look really, really plain Jane. Here we're starting to get a little bit fancier as the skill level increases. So I go through and build some doors. Uh, I had mentioned some earlier use of dirt and the dirt accumulation is like right here, down here in the corners and some up here. It kind of gives you a little bit of a clue on how some of the techniques come through. We then will focus on building the roof. And so the question is, how do we get from this plain Jane roof, which I will explain how to go through and get yourself to this primed state uh, with the shing or with the roofing material mounted to the sub roof. Uh, the idea though is what kind of roofing 
do we really want a, this to represent in the corrugated roofing? We could go through and do the plain jean. This is weathered, you know, rusted roof metal that everybody has. Or we could go through and try something a little bit more complicated, like this blue haze uh, that's on this roof. But you just don't want to look at a single roof. If possible, it's always nice to have a picture of uh, everything together so that you can kind of figure out what is it that I really want to produce and how do they match up to one another in the real world. So this is from the Stanley Mines just outside of Black Hawk, Colorado, but this has multiple different types of rusted corrugated metal for one to kind of study. In this picture, I am showing the first layering of the red hued rust that is the base rusting for this color that we're chasing. And if we go to the next photo, you can actually see down here this metal piece that has slipped out shows a real good line between the heavy rust and the blue hue, blue gray hue, haze, whatever you want to call this, that's on the corrugated roofing. So if you can compare that with this corner up here, you can see that we're generally in the ballpark close enough for government work on a practice model in my book. I will then take you through the coloring steps to start applying the blue gray haze to the roof. Uh, it's, I, as I recall, a four step process. And uh, this is the first step being applied. You then come up with a finished roof that we add to the finished cabin to give yourself a completed structure. And that brings us up to the end of the preview of the Lucas Cabin Build tutorial. In the next cabin tutorial will be Seth's Cabin and there we'll move up to the next skill level of board by board, uh, board and bats and coloring the strip wood with uh, Prisma color markers in a different technique. Um, we'll also use uh, something called sandable hard gesso uh, to try to make a textured, correctly concrete textured looking type uh, foundation for that cabin and test out some colored pencils to use on the edges of rolled paper stock. Again, this build. Um, I'm still in the process of doing the write-up uh, and I'm planning on getting that right up to the uh, new track webmaster group uh, by this weekend for posting. So you sh should be able to find it sometime next week on the website. And if you do want to get in touch with me, um, you can always reach me at kbnewtracks at fastmail.us. And with that, I will conclude this unless there's some questions. Chris, it, Chris, it's fascinating to me how you build some of this stuff. I really can't thank you enough for taking the time and wanting to, uh, to do these sandboxes. I really do think it's interesting and I hope everybody's learns a lot from you. Well, thank you. <laughs>